Hi, I'm David Berlin, Editor-in-Chief with Programmable Web, and I'm here today to bring you an 11-part video series on APIs 101. Now, APIs stand for Application Programming Interfaces. Perhaps you've heard of them. And this series is for those of you who want to learn more about APIs. Maybe you read about them in Fortune Magazine or somewhere else on the net. You want to get smart. You want to have a conversation. We're going to deliver to you today a basic to intermediate understanding of APIs, what they are, why they're important, and what sort of benefits you can get if you start putting them to use in your organization. So stay tuned for this series because it's going to be great. Now, broadly speaking, we're going to cover you know, about six or seven topics. The first one of these is what exactly is an API and how do they work? Next, we're going to talk about why you should invest in an API program. Whether or not you're a developer who's consuming APIs and using them in your software, or if you're an organization that's thinking about providing APIs so that developers can use them. Then we're going to talk about how to productize APIs. This is a very important issue because a lot of organizations don't treat their APIs as products. That's a mistake. We're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about how to treat them as products so that you get the best possible results out of them. Now, an application programming interface is the sort of thing that hackers really love. They always look for programmatic interfaces to get their hackings done. So it's very important to secure them, whether you're putting them on your corporate network or you're going to be putting them on the internet. In either case, security is one of the first concerns you need to think about. We'll talk about security. Then we're going to talk about something called API-first design and why it's so very important. Because you want to build the best APIs, the ones that developers are going to love to use. And that's what API-first design is all about. And finally, we're going to do some hands-on. We're going to show you how to build an API and how to consume it. So let's get started with this first part of our video series, which is what exactly is an API? Well, as it turns out, APIs are exactly like user interfaces. And you are very familiar with your typical user interface that's on your smartphone. This interface is designed for a human to use. It's a user interface, an end user like a human. Well, APIs are really the exact same thing as a user interface, except it's for an entirely different user. It's not for a human being, it's for a machine. It's for something like a software application running on a computer to be able to access the same information the same way you might access it on your smartphone, only it's designed so that the machine can do it instead. So on this slide, what we're showing is, is that the machine that's actually going through an API, which may be on a network, that's why we have clouds on this slide, could be your smartphone accessing a server across the network. Could be a smartphone accessing Salesforce.com or Google. On, a, on the other hand, it could be two servers talking to each other. Maybe you have something like SAP talking through the network to Salesforce.com to exchange some information through these networkable APIs. Now, an API is a contract that exists between the two ends of the transaction. Right? And I want to get some terminology really clear here. We talk about APIs in terms of consumers and providers. If you're a developer building an application and you're going to use an API that's out on the internet and incorporate it into your application, you are considered the consumer of the API, the consuming developer. You're the API consumer, right? But if you're the organization like Google who is putting an API onto the internet so that developers can consume it, for example, the Google Maps API, then you are the API provider. It's very important terminology to understand because throughout this series of videos, we'll be talking about both consumers of APIs and providers of APIs. Now, why would anybody do this? What's so cool about it? Well, as it turns out, if you're an application developer, you can outsource certain requirements of your application to an API. So going back to that example of using Google Maps, Instead of writing all the code you would need to paint a map in your application, you can actually just outsource all of that with one line of code to the Google Maps API. So this is a really good example of how you might outsource some sort of functionality in your application. Another example might be a patient record. Maybe on a mobile application you have a app that can access your own patient portal and you might want to look at the results of your last a medical visit to the hospital or to your doctor's office. So you can look at a patient record. You can look at a location as a pin represented on a map. Very often you see that happening in some applications where they have the Google Maps functionality built right into them and a little pin shows up at the location that you're either standing at or that you're going to go to. 
or you might want to execute a financial transaction through an API. There are standard APIs for things like PayPal or other websites that can take uh, financial transactions. Now in order for this to happen, there has to be a technical contract that exists between the two parties. A very exacting understanding between the application that's consuming the API and the API provider. This is imperative because if that understanding is not exact and is not followed to the T, then the actual API transaction will break down. It's kind of like a legal contract. If you think about like a famous sports player who plays for some team, a soccer team or a football team, he or she has to sit down and sign a legal contract and then both parties are bound to certain performance by that contract. The player must behave a certain way in the field, must deliver a certain performance on the field, and the organization must pay the player a certain amount of money for that performance behavior. These are very exacting terms and an API is no different. There is a contract that exists between the consumer of the API and the provider of the API in the way that performance of both is required. And the contract usually represents some agreed upon standards on exactly how the information or the functionality like drawing a map and putting a pin on it is going to be exchanged. Sometimes it involves standards and those standards could be de jure standards like the ones that are set by the W3C or they could be de facto standards, the ones that are set maybe by a bunch of players in an industry. Now, we're at the end of this first part of our video series. In part two, we're going to talk about some real world analogies that will help you to better understand just how it is that APIs do what they do. We're going to use a plug in the wall, we're going to use some Lego, and we're going to use a cargo ship. A cargo ship? Why would we use a cargo ship? Come to the second part of this video series and you'll see why. Thanks very much and we'll see you in the next part.